Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do the thing. Hi, Dai. Um, so, basically, we finished all of the real CPU opcodes. All the official CPU opcodes are done now. So the next thing that we need to do is start working on graphics. And the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to start uh, with the Donkey Kong game because it's the simplest version of graphics. And the way that we're going to uh, set this up, PPU time, yes, is that we're just going to copy this nest test, oops, this nest test test and convert it into Donkey. Donkey.ns. We're not going to do this patch anymore. Hello. Hydragon. Something like that. Close enough. Alright, so if we try and run Donkey, it should explode pretty quickly. Except that it didn't. That's interesting. It's more than all right. That's good. Hang on a second, what happened here exactly? Oh, it's because I didn't change the name up here. Just didn't run anything. There we go. All right, address not implemented 2000. That looks exactly like what I expected. So, Per my reference materials, one of them, I have way too many of them. Right, so 2000 is the PPU registers location. So let's take a look at that. 2000 is right. Oh, also, let's pull up the initial state because we should make sure that our PPU, when we start implementing it, actually has that. So let's go ahead and. I guess we'll just make a new thing, right? So, uh, ppu.rs is what it's going to be called. Oh, I should probably delete this font. I don't need that. I don't know what this is about. Um, ppu, here we go. Yep, absolutely. So for the PPU, we're going to need to NROM mapper start struct PPU. We're going to give it some registers, which is going to be PPU control, PPU mask. PPU status, OAM address, latch. What's that about? Oh well. Latch low, latch high, PPU scroll. PPU address. Oh, hello. Unexpected guess. Yes, hello, buddy. Oh, he's so cute. Purring. They're annoyed that I've been doing this so much lately. They don't like it when I talk to ghosts. That's all of you. Kitty time. It's always kitty time in this house. The other one is just off frame. He's like right over there. Okay, yes, hi. All right, I'll rearrange my legs so you can sit more comfortably. Ugh, okay, there we go. Good kitty. All right. Odd frame? Is that a register? Okay. It doesn't look like it. No, it's not. Okay. 
those are the registers. And then the power up state for them, it looks like basically just setting everything to zero would be fine, assuming I'm not going to support resets for now. So let's just do that. Uh, so then new PPU 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 control zero PPU mask zero PPU status zero zero PPU scroll address, data, okay. Now, I know that Psy is going to give me shit for this, and probably rightly, and I probably will change it later, but I'm going to start by just sticking the PPU in the CPU. Use crate, PPU, start. Velocity so sad. Yeah, it's fine. I'll fix it eventually, probably. Where do I create the CPU? PPU, PPU, new. Oh, I need to pub it for one thing. Everything is public. We all know what that means. What what means? That I'm never going to change it? Do I have to do that? That doesn't seem right. What's going on here? Maybe a missing crate PPU. Oh, I know what the problem is. Yeah, I'll fix that at some point, probably. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it depends, right? If it's fine, if it turns out not to be a big deal, then I won't change it. There's a lot of stuff in here. I was thinking about this this morning in the shower. That's, like, super hacky and not at all how I would do this under not a time crunch. But, okay, so what am I saying here? Address not implemented. Hey Waggle, hey Alt Overflow, how's it going? Kitty, 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 you're so distracting. Okay. Else if adder is greater than equal to 0x2000 and adder is less than, I think, 2008. Yep. 0x 2008. Hello, kitty. Self dot ppu dot get reg adder is equal to the value, which means we need to implement pub fun get reg. And mute self returns and mute u8. And it's gonna. Oh, and it needs an address. Working on a Game Boy emulator. That's awesome. Oh, I wasn't actually looking at the code. I thought you were gonna put all the PPU fields in the CPU struct. No. <laughs> no. That seems extremely dumb. And if I was gonna quote unquote fix it later, that would make it extremely difficult to do. Adder is greater than or equal to 0x2000, and adder is less than 0x2008. Match let index equal adder minus 0x2000. Match adder. Can you guys legit work on stuff while watching, listening to streams? That's actually a really good question. I can't. I can't do anything that involves um, speech, like 
language. It jams up my speech processing centers, and I think to myself in language, so it makes it very hard to think to myself, which is also why I've stopped typing, because now I'm talking. always have stuff running while I'm working. I wonder, like, when you read to yourself, like if you're reading a book, do you hear the words in your mind? Like, do you uh, almost sort of sub-vocalize them? Because I've heard that if you don't do that, then you don't have the problem that I was describing. Gonna be playing Paladins again. Yeah, I've seen that on Discord a couple of times. I have no idea what that game is. Oh god, so many problems. These all need self. You don't self-vocalize? Huh. I do. Use of possibly uninitialized variable. Oh, okay. Just needs a return. Overwatch for free to play. Yes, you have. I just forgot about it because it didn't sound interesting. If I'm being totally honest. Internal error acts entered unreachable code. Cool. Why? Oh, because this is address and not index. Derp. Kitty. He's very warm. I should have opened a window before I started this. Panic at assertion failed. 2080. You don't find what I have to say interesting. I mean, that is not something I'm willing to make a blanket comment on. I just don't find Overwatch interesting. Self dot PPU dot get reg adder just return it. Help consider changing this to be immutable reference. Uh, it's supposed to be copied. Fine, dot clone. How about that? Does that make you feel better? Oh, I just can't call it. Fine, fine. Fine. Get reg mute. PPU access is mirror. Okay, good point. I'll check that in a minute. That's the kind of thing I basically expect to run into via slamming my face into it. And like just fix it then. It doesn't really seem like it's going to be too difficult, but maybe I will actually do it. Uh -huh. Get reg. Get reg. Mute. How's that? That clone is probably unnecessary now as well. Actually, instead of a get reg mute, although I can leave that around, I guess, I should do a set reg because then I can just explode until I actually implement it. That sounds like a good idea to me. Address value. Then we'll get rid of this chunk.
Is that a thing, Interos? I always forget. Standard unimplemented. Yep. Cool. All right, so we're just gonna do this for all of them. Do -do -do. Instead of get reg new, we're going to do set reg to address value. Okay, fair. Uh, Twenty eighty. Your reference. There's a lot of uh, Paladins chat going on in the chat now, which is cool. Sounds like a pretty fun game, I guess. Okay, so now what we want to do is take a look at what actually happens in the PP registers. PV registers. Okay, so there's PV control, which is the first one. All right. So what we want to do is find all the bits that are going to change and implement them one at a time. If self .ppu control and 0x01 is equal to 0 and value.ppu control, or it's not a dot, it's just a thing, and 0x01 is not equal to 0, that's an R. Base name table address. Okay, so we're just going to get two here, I guess. So this should be three is not equal to value and three. Am I going to get in trouble for that? Should I actually just check whether it's set or not? Like, is resetting the same name table actually an op or is it a no op? I mean, I guess it doesn't actually matter. You don't actually have to do anything for this currently. Which of these flags actually affects the internal state of things? VRAM address increment per CPU read write or of PPU data. Zero, add one, going across. One, add 32, going down. Okay, that doesn't matter either. Sprite pattern table address for eight by eight sprites. Doesn't matter either. Background table pattern Background pattern table access address, that doesn't matter either. I mean, I know they matter, but they don't matter like immediately. I'm looking specifically at this, generating NMI at the start of the V-blank interval, which is the main thing that I want. And then I'm just going to assert that we're never, ever going to set this bit because that would destroy the NES, is my understanding. So of course they all matter, but they don't matter immediately at time of assigning. So. Uh, assert value and which bit is that? 6. 0x40 zero is equal to 0. Otherwise, are you trying to blow up your nest? It won't necessarily destroy the debt and ask, but it can at least damage it because wall shorts. Yeah, yeah, electromigration, blah, 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 blah. Like, obviously it does. If, uh, setting NMI, so if you're newly setting NMI, then that would be value and 0x80 is equal to 1, and 
uh, self dot view control and zero x eighty equal zero. Else if value and zero x eighty is equal to zero and self dot view control and zero x eighty is equal to one. Disabling NMI. Oh yeah, good point. Greater than zero. Or this one should be equal to zero, and this one should be greater than zero. That'll work. Wait, okay, so hmm. How is this implemented, this NMI thing? Is it uh, is there a timer that's like free running or does it turn off the timer? Like if I set that flag, does the next interval happen at number of clocks of vertical blanking interval or does it happen at next time the vertical blanking timer fires, which might be one or two cycles from now? If the PPU is currently in vertical blank and the PPU status v blank flag is still set, changing the NMI flag from 0 to 1 will immediately generate an NMI. Okay, so it looks like it will just run. It doesn't actually restart it. Okay, in that case, none of this is useful. We'll just self.ppu control is equal to the value. I'm just going to keep screwing that up. NMI always happen in the same cycle on the same part of the scan line. Okay, so it's got to be waiting on an NMI probably. <sighs> okay, so let's learn about how this works here. Where is the v-blank thingy? Didn't I literally just see a thing that said vertical blanking interval? Okay, I know what it is. That's not what I need to know. Let's read about an MI. Edge sensitive. CPU checks for interrupts and finds it set. Most boards, E65 CPU allow it to disable generation. NMI line is connected to the PPU and is used to detect vertical blanking. Yep. Frame timing and access to CPU, CPU, and the vertical blanking. All right, so I think the first thing I need to do is implement basically an article. Have you ever implemented a emulated a system that uses file graphics out of curiosity? I've never emulated a system. This is my first emulator that got beyond the, uh-huh, let's do some cool shit stage. All right, so what we want to do here, basically the CPU has its own internal free running clock and on particular ticks of that free running clock, it will do some shit, right? That's basically how this works. An even odd flag that's titled every file every frame. I swear I had like a better reference than this a couple minutes ago. Where was that? Got too many tabs open. Should close some. Do 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 do. Okay, nothing useful. Um, hmm. Let's just look at this for a minute. Frame timing, which I already had had open. If the CPU checks the view blank loop. 
It's a readable occur once PP is a predator. Alright. With rendering disabled, each PPU frame is blah 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 PPU clocks long. With rendering enabled, each odd frame is one PPU clock shorter. By skipping the first idle tick on the first visible scan line. Ah, this is what I was thinking of. So, for each scan line, so we start at the beginning here and we go this way across for each scan line and then we have H blank and we jump back here and run to the end and then at the end we'll have V blank. Is that right? Is that how that works? That seems sensible to me. And it's probably just going to do this every single frame, right? All right, so let's get ourselves, we'll just use exactly the same um, pattern like this. Give ourselves a queue, PPU op, struct, or not a struct, it's an enum. Turn and that means this has to be public. Everything has to be public. So annoying. And basically, what's going to happen is when we start up, let q equal vec deep mu q dot push front something. And then Q, this is the Q. And the thing that we're going to push to the front is this first cycle, which is going to be odd, or it's skipped on BG plus odd. So if background rendering is on. Okay. There is no skip clock. Okay. So we're just going to start with an idle. No odd. Okay, and then in the CPU loop, we're going to execute you up got into get PC just for logging. Okay, so currently we're popping the CPU UOP queue once per cycle and not popping the PPU at all. So after we've done this, we're going to do self.runppu. Fun run PPU and itself. And this is just going to do exactly this. Or maybe it'll just be self.pp.run. I don't know. Stick with this for now. Nah, we'll stick with this for now. That's fine. This is going to be tricky because I'm going to have to get access to memory and stuff, but we'll cross that bridge. Actually, I don't even know if they share memory. going to run it three times. There is no R2. Is 
Seriously? Oh, I implemented from, not into. That makes sense. Stop it. Do do do. Do 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 do. This is all just kind of boilerplate stuff that needs to be in place. If I'm going to use that same architecture, which I do want to do. What does this look like? Oh goodness, so many problems. Didn't close this, that was very dumb. Gotta import deck geek. How's that? Consider giving it a static lifetime on GitQ. Well, we're not using it, so let's just blow it away. Go! Uh oh. called unwrap on a null value. Where? It's weird. Oh, it's probably upset that I don't actually have enough uh, opcodes in the queue. That makes complete sense to me. Okay, so... Hmm. Are there other idle bytes in this set? It doesn't look like there are. So, the next thing to do would be to NT byte, which I think means fetching the name table byte. Alright, is that what that means? How do name tables work? Name tables. What's up, fam? A name table is a 1024 byte area of memory used by the PPU to lay out backgrounds. Controls 1 8 byte pixel character cell. Each name table has 30 rows of 32 tiles each. Attribute table. Oh, hey, PPU memory map, which I probably already have open. Cool. Four name tables arranged in a 2x2 two two pattern. Nest board only has 2 KB bytes of VRAM. 6502 done. Yeah, absolutely. It's exciting. Working on PPU, don't really know what is happening, but I'll figure it out. Conceptually, the PPU does this 33 times for each scan line. Fetch a name table entry, fetch the corresponding attribute table entry, and increment the current VRAM address within the same row. Fetch the lower order byte of an 8x1 pixel sliver of the pattern table. Fetch the higher order byte. Turn the attribute table and the pattern table into palette indices and combine them with data from sprite data using priority. Jeez, that's a lot. It also does a fetch of a 34th tuple, which is never used as some map mappers rely on. Next, the SNES. I was talking about this this morning, but like I'm zero percent motivated to work on a SNES emulator because View has like, and I know this isn't what View intended to do, but basically killed the scene um, by virtue of being very good and doing the hard work. Which is cool because Beast SNES is great, so it's Hagen, but we. Um, it's also a little concerning because it's just one person. And so maybe we should find some way to like uh, export that knowledge.
262 scan lines per frame. Each scan line lasts for 341 cycles. Each clock produces one pixel. Line numbers, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the name table byte fetch. Extract that knowledge out of him. No, I don't mean that. Oh, is B working on a SNES emulation tutorial? I didn't know that. Okay, so the PPU register has a base name table address field. All right, so fetch nt low. PPU, comma, get NT base is going to be the first thing. It's going to return a U16. It's going to take and self, and it's going to do self dot PPU control. Let index equal self and pp control and 0x03. Most systems have an emulator that almost everyone uses. Also, the argument is only valid assuming that you want to improve the state of the art. Well, I do. Um, if I was going to do something for learning, I would pick something simpler than this NES, which is what I'm doing right now. I mean, I take your point. I'm not saying it's like a bad. Uh, thing to do to work on a SNES emulator. I'm just saying I'm not motivated to do so. Whereas N64 emulation is such a god awful mess that I'm absolutely motivated to work on it. Although I know some people would disagree with me on that assessment, and it's arguably a little bit rude to the people in that scene. That's how I feel. Sorry. Okay, so that's the base name table address. Uh, and then it's rude to want to fix problems. No, I mean, it kind of implies, I, I mean, I didn't say this, but some people would hear it as me saying, um, like, that somebody had fucked up. And that was why it was bad. Point out problems exist. It's not wrong to point out problems exist, but it is not super polite to not acknowledge the efforts that people have made to get emulation to the point that it's at, which is, you know, it's a super impressive thing to do, even though it didn't really work out, uh, even though it hasn't reach the level of something like the NES or the SNES or GameCube scenes. Okay, so the name table byte fetch appears to just walk from the base, right? So it's going to take a U16. Base plus pixel times two, probably. PPU dot, what is it called in the PPU table? Memory map, there you are. I mean, it's just called RAM, I guess. PPU address is a 16 kilobyte space, completely separate from the CPU address, either access directly by the PPU itself or by the CPU. Two kilobytes of physical RAM dedicated to the PPU, normally routed to the name table address space. The internally contains 256 bytes of memory for OAM. So I'm guessing then. OAM is internal to the PPU, and 
and then this address space is mapped through the mapper. Is that correct? Yeah, normally mapped by the cartridge to a sure ROM or sure RAM, often with a bank switching wrapping in them. Normally mapped to the NES internal VRAM. Providing two name tables with a mirroring configuration controlled by the cartridge, but it can be partially or fully remapped to RAM on the cartridge, allowing up to four simultaneous name tables. Usually a mirror of the two kilobyte region is not configurable, always match the internal palette control. But yeah, so it looks like these accesses are going to go through the mapper, which means that the, CPU, the PPU needs to hold a mapper reference, which in the CPU, I think I made a box, which I think is fine. Except that no, it doesn't want to be a box. It wants to be an RC. <laughs> the RC is probably totally unnecessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Woohoo! All right. So the PPU has OAM, which is a U8. 256 which we'll get to eventually and then what we want to do in the name table fetch is ppu.mapper. I think get yeah so you can get mute Does it deref into non-mute? Yes, it does. Okay, so if I don't need mute, it should just work. Um, what's even in my mapper struct or um, what we call it? Trait get byte, which is exactly what I need to do. Get byte address. I don't know where that needs to go. So let's just uh, slide this away here. It's going to be a lot more kind of figuring out what I actually am doing in this section because I'm much less prepared for it. But that's okay. It'll be fun. Each byte in the name table controls one A byte cell. Name table's attribute values. Fetch a name table entry, fetch the corresponding attribute table entry. But if we look at the timeline, it's showing two bytes of that, but is it only fetching one byte? But it takes two cycles? For beginning emulator development, you might want to make all of these things. Focus on the skinny on any scrolling and understand how VC red updates work, starting with some game that doesn't scroll like Donkey Kong's easiest. Just draw the first name table, ignore the exact way your RAM is accessed, ignore the child free fetch. Blabity, 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 blabity. I don't want to do any of this. Things start to get messy only when you get to mid frame state changes. Okay, well, figure it out eventually. Alright, so. VRAM fetch. Does it take two PPU clocks to access the VRAM? Because that would kind of make sense to me, considering it's running twice as fast. This is a dummy scan line. The sole purpose is to fill the shift register. It still makes the same memory accesses. This is the one that skips. Cycle zero is an idle cycle. The value on the PPU address bus during this cycle appears to be the same chur address that is later used to fetch the low background tile byte starting at dot five. Possibly calculated during the two unused NC fetches at the end of previous handline. Cycles one through twenty-five. Each memory access takes P two PPU cycles to complete and four must be performed per tile. Okay, great. That makes me feel a lot better. So this is actually just fetch and key. And then it's going to do Okay, 
and we'll have an internal storage for name table, which is a U8. Name table byte equals .get byte. This is wrong. It's just plus pixel because the, I was wrong about what happened. And then what we need to do is schedule the next thing. So the no op is going to schedule the name table fetch. So ppu dot q dot push front uh, ppu op fetch nt low zero. This one needs to schedule wait man ppu op uh, fetch at except that we're not going to do that yet so we're just going to do ppu op no op. push front all sorts of problems here okay which is totally fine assert false just so it explodes when we get there make sure everything's cool so okay we got Q Mapper, we need to change this to be with mapper. Oh, hello, cat. Got tired of me talking to nobody again. He was sleeping on top of my computer. Now he's sleeping on top of me. Computee, maybe? Six and then name table byte again. It really shouldn't matter. Match arms have incompatible types. Expected fun pointer found closure. Oh, I'm capturing something again by mistake here. That's why. Hello, buddy. He's a good kid. Uh huh. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that should take care of that. Hopefully, except that it's not being called correctly now. Match you up. Right, this is the thing that I was doing here, yep. Oops. Keep you up. Fetch and T. false right here. You gotta figure that out in a minute. Uh, okay, so let arg equal right, just let arg arg equal pixel otherwise arg equals zero. Self arg we need to wait. Okay, hopefully that'll run. Gotta cast stuff. Let's 
variant or associated item not found. Oh, because I named it fetch nt, and then I changed it, or I changed it from fetch nt to fetch nt low. Hey, buddy. Right, and now PPU, you, PPU new is gone. Did I just break something? No. Okay. PPU new. PPU with mapper. Mapper logger. Go. Expected U8, found U16. Not sure why I made this a U16. Let's make it a U8. Oh my god. Why can't I just type control? Logger not found in the scope. Yep, there. Here, everyone, check out my cat for a second. Not quite low enough. Cat? Cat. He's such a good boy. Proud cat dad. I am a proud cat dad. He's a good cat. than my stupid face. Just leave it on you for a little while, buddy. I don't think that's actually how that works. Do -do 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 -do. cat. He's a good cat. The other cat is sleeping in the cat chair. Oh, okay. Goodbye. I have an entire chair just for the cats because they uh, otherwise get cranky. Can I like reborrow this? Is that what I want to do? I borrow it, it won't quite work. What if I dereference that borrow? Will that work? Nope. Okay. Cat. No. Don't step on the keyboard. Ugh. Okay. Buddy, you're so in the way. Holy cow. Oh, jeez. Okay. Disrupted. Game called on count of cat. <clears throat> All right. Me just wants to help you code. He does, except now he's gone behind my computer to eat my uh, webcam cord. Downcast the box to a concrete type. Makes immutable reference into the given RC. All right, you know what? This is dumb. I'm just going to make a reference that is a static lifetime, and that should hopefully work. Well, now we'll know what happened if your face cam just disappears. Yeah.
Um, okay. What are you talking about now? This is all dumb. Hi, buddy. I'm definitely doing a dumb rust thing. Hey, Velocity, you still here? Oh, hi again. You're not being very supportive, kitty. Nope, velocity gone. Uh, Alright. Oh, hey. Hey, what stupid thing am I doing here? So I want... So I have a box mapper in my CPU because I don't want to deal with lifetimes. Even though the lifetimes would be fine. I just don't want to deal with them. Um, but then my PPU also needs access to the mapper. And I was trying to give it a reference, but it doesn't like taking a reference to the box, presumably because... It's a box, um, and it doesn't like. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to turn a box into an RC or like get an RC to the thing inside the box. What's the best way to handle this situation? I'm not actually very good at Rust yet. I haven't written very many super complicated product programs in it. Maybe I need to dereference it first. Value borrowed here after move. Box does not implement the copy trait. You probably know more rest than me. It would be helpful if Nick was here. Yes, it would be helpful if Nick was here. Maybe change the architecture, what component owns what. Well, I mean, like, currently the uh, CPU owns the PPU, which is, like, not ideal. No, I don't need box. That's the thing. I just don't want to screw around with uh, lifetimes because, well, actually, I might be able to just own the mapper. Why didn't I own the mapper? I feel like I had a reason for that. Uh, test, donkey. I know I don't need a uh, box. But I didn't want to mess around with lifetimes. But I think I could actually just do impl mapper instead of box. And then that would make things a lot easier. It's not going to let me do that, but. PPU, PPU as trait. What? Fair amount of goofiness, but that's okay. The same ownership semantics as T apply to box T as well. Yeah, me too. I feel like I I feel like the thing that I was trying to do would just work. Um, except that I can't figure out like the right way to express it. T 
So now, what do you mean ambiguous associated type? PPU, PPU as trait? Oh, right, and then because I made it static here. So this is where the RC might be useful. Because basically I just don't want to deal with lifetimes all the time. So, okay, yeah, so we're going to make this an RC mapper. RC dine mapper, if you must. And then RC dine mapper. And then in here, now that we just have this, we're going to do RC, RC, new mapper. I don't understand why you're angry about this. Ambiguous associated type. Oh, it's because I have a colon instead of an equal sign. I'm so dumb. Go. Oh. Okay. Use of undeclared type or module RC. It's in standard. The parameter type impl mapper may not live long enough. Infiltrate not allowed outside functions. Yeah, okay. I feel like that should work, but whatever. And now there's all sorts of expected type arguments issues, which I think is exactly what I was trying to avoid. Full CPU. T in full T mapper CPU T. CPU CPU T. Is that gonna work? No, because I added an extra one. Isn't RC ref C the way to borrow bypass the ownership checker? Yeah, but I don't want to bypass it. Did I mean CPU? Yes, I did. I don't actually want to, like, say, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing, to the um, borrow checker. Um, I want, I just want to use it to avoid having to do a whole bunch of lifetime passing, just like I'm having to do generic passing right now. Type parameter T must be used as a type parameter for some local type. Only trace to find the current crate being applied for a type parameter. What? E.g. my struct T. It is. Oh, jeez, what's going on here? If I delete this, you'll get mad at me again. Because there's no type parameter in the scope. Type parameter T must be used as a type parameter from local type. Which it is. It's being used as a type parameter for a local type. What more do you want from me? Oh. 
Only trace defined in the current crate can be implemented for its I parameter. Hello, cat. Maybe I can actually use. Oops, hello. Apparently, I made memory on the GPU to get around things like this. Like, look, this. I know what it looks like here, but it's not. Hello, buddy. Uh, I know what it looks like here, but it's not actually the case that I don't know how to do the lifetimes. I absolutely know how to do the lifetimes. I am just like trying to avoid having to pass T to everything and tick A to everything. And by trying to do that, I have somehow inflicted some sort of hell upon myself. But if I wanted to just do this with references, I know exactly how to do it. Like there's not actually a lifetime problem here. It's just that I didn't want to pass tick A around everywhere. But I can't figure out how to use box or RC correctly, and I can't ask the Rust Discord for help while I'm streaming, which is what I would normally do. I mean, I guess I can, but... Oh, buddy. My cat is being super sweet today. What time is it? It's like 4.20? Okay. Um, I don't understand why this is being such a butt. I see, yeah, I don't know that. Can I just get rid of this type parameter? No, because you're going to get mad at me for that. Type parameter T must be used as a type parameter for some local type. It is being used as a type parameter for a local type. I don't understand what you're talking about. Little buddy. This is very annoying. Not least because I'm proving people right about Rust. Even though this isn't a rest problem, this is definitely a me problem. I gotta go. Good luck with this. Probably not great for a stream, but I'll def ask on the rest Discord. That's exactly what I'm about to do. Do do do. Actually, you know what? It's basically lunchtime anyway. I'm just going to uh, shift enter is useless here. I did not know that. Hello, kitty. Uh, I'm going to take a little break, I think, from streaming. I'm going to get some food. I'm going to get some help. And then when I come back, we'll engage again. I know this really wasn't a very productive stream, but I don't want to like flail around in front of people. Um, it's not good viewing, and it stresses me out. So I'm just going to take a little break here. Um, I'll be back. I don't know, probably like an hour after I eat dinner um, and feed the cats and stuff so they stop being so adorably annoying. Uh, as a payment for the short stream and the fact that I'll be coming back, here is a shot of this cat being cute. He's a good boy. Yeah, she's so cute. And then here is the other cat. Can you see that? Up. Oh. Up a little bit, is that better? Where you at, buddy? There we go. Just sleeping on the other chair. He's only being cute because he wants food. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Sorry this was sort of a lame uh, attempt. I'll be more prepared and come back in a little bit. I'll see you all in like an hour or so.